On to Rogue, we have Find the Imposter. So this is Rogue's quest line. You want to play two SI7 cards. Your reward is a Spy Gizmo. And then play two SI7 cards. You get a Spy Gizmo. So the first two phases of this are exactly the same. And then play two SI7 cards to get Spy Master Scabs. Spy Master Scabs is 5 minutes 7 7 with Battle Cry. Add one of each Spy Gizmo to your hand. So, the Spy Gizmos are one mana, return an enemy minion to its owner's hand. They can't play it next turn. That's definitely very powerful. Get rid of a threat, and they can't just replay it. Uh, there's a one mana 3 2 mech with Battle Cry. Look at three cards in your opponent's deck. Pick one to put on top so you can give your opponent the worst draw in their deck potentially. And it's also just strapped onto a one mana 3 2. That's quite powerful. A uh, Noggin Fog Generator, one mana, give a minion plus two attack and stealth. Uh, I think that one's kind of sketchy, but certainly useful situationally. Hidden Gyro Blade, one mana, three, two weapon with death rattle. Throw this at a random enemy, enemy minion that is. So you attack twice with this and then basically deal three damage to something. Or if it's buff, you do even more damage, five with a deadly poison potentially. So a uh, pretty good... Very strong weapon, I would say. And then finally, Undercover Mole, one mana, two, three beast with stealth. After this attacks, add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class. So that's, uh, that's Shaku, right? Very similar to Shaku, at least. So basically, that's a lot of information to take in, but almost all, like all the Spy Gizmos are pretty good. Maybe like four out of five of them are good, but the Spy Gizmos are pretty good. So now we have to look at how easy is it to play uh, six SI7 cards? Well, we got some new ones in the set. The only ones that existed prior to this were SI7 Agent and SI7 Neutral Secret Hate Guy, which is not good. So uh, the playability of this is definitely going to depend on the SI7 cards. I guess I'll just go ahead and spoil it. All the SI7 cards, like as an archetype, look kind of garbage, to be honest. So yeah, I don't love I don't love the quest. You have to play some really sketchy cards. The payoffs are like good, but it's just like generating more cards you can play. It's not a win condition like a lot of the other uh like a lot of the other quest lines, so I don't know, the card looks a little sus. But here's one of the SI7 cards, Extortion. Uh, I think this is the best one of them by uh, a decent margin probably. But one mana with tradable, deal three damage to an undamaged character. So removal spell, or you can trade it to draw a card. Either way, it's one mana. This is just a good card. I mean, you probably play this in a lot of rogue decks, even if uh, even if you don't care about the SI7 tag. I mean, people already play Brain Freeze, but I guess Brain Freeze does have combo synergy, which this card doesn't have. But uh, it seems pretty solid. And obviously you play it with the quest line, if that's a thing. Uh, Garot, we've seen this card. Two mana deal, eight damage. Rogue can pretty easily draw their whole deck. Really good card in any rogue deck that wants to reduce the opponent's life points to zero. Uh, Maestra of the Masquerade. Two mana, three, two. You start the game as a different class until you play a rogue card. So I guess the way this works is... Uh, your opponent thinks that you're a priest or whatever, but secretly you were a rogue the whole time. And I think you even get the hero power of that class until you play a rogue card, which is, uh, cool, I guess. So, the, uh, the value of this card is that your opponent can mulligan incorrectly. And I think that's actually a pretty valuable effect. I think this card could, like, low-key be really strong. If you're playing like a really aggressive rogue deck and then like 50% of the time your opponent mulligans for the control matchup, then they might just die if you just like curve out. And on its own, this is a two mana three two, but you don't really have to like ever draw or play this card necessarily. Screwing up your opponent's mulligan can potentially be a really big deal or it can potentially not be a big deal. But if it's not a big deal, then this is a two mana three two that you're not gonna draw in half your games anyway. So, like, I think this card is potentially pretty good. Um, it does kind of depend on how your deck is built, though. Because, like, if you're playing Spy Mistress on turn one, then you, you know, 
kind of show your hand a little bit early. But if your early curve is uh, like neutral stuff, or if you're just not doing much in the early turns, and then like suddenly you equip Swine Tusk Shank and start buffing it and kill the opponent in three turns, then uh, yeah, I mean, this card gets even more powerful the longer you don't play a rogue card. But even if you play Spy Mistress on one, you could still potentially screw up their mulligan, which I think has pretty good value. Lone Shark, best art in the set, by the way. It's just a shark with a bag of coins on its back. But uh, this is a 3-mana three 3-4 three, beast with Battle Cry. Give your opponent a coin. Death Rattle, you get two. Um, I don't love giving my opponent a coin. On the other hand, I do like giving myself two coins. So I'm a little torn on this card. But in theory, Rogue should be able to use the coins better than their opponent. But maybe that's more of a historical thing than a current thing. I mean, Tomb Pillager is in the core set, right? And no one plays that card. But even if you don't care about, like, coins for Auctioneer or whatever, you're still just getting more mana out of this card than your opponent is. You play this on three, and then they get to play, on their turn four, they get to play a five mana card, but then you get to play a six mana card, so you still come out ahead, right? I guess this does curve, like, right into Jandus, which is potentially good. I don't really know what deck you play this in, though. I guess maybe you just play this in the, like, Kazakus, uh, Efficient Octobot, whatever, Rogue. But that deck maybe wants to play, like, Garot now. I don't know if you really care about playing Lone Shark. But that deck probably does want to play a lot of card draw, so the more mana you have to draw cards, the better, I guess. I don't know. I think this card is fine, but it's, like, kind of slow. I don't know if it has a home. Alright, another SI7 card. This is SI7 Operative. 3 minute 2 4 with Rush. After this attacks a minion, gain stealth. Uh, seems mediocre. 2 damage on turn 3. Doesn't kill much. Even if you do kill like a Bloodfin Raptor, then you get like a 2 1 with stealth, which is fine, but Working Infiltrator doesn't stay relevant that long in, or that late into the game. Uh, support the quest line a bit, but like. A mediocre card supporting a mediocre card in my opinion i don't love this card i think it just doesn't do enough it doesn't even kill like coal car pack runner on curve i don't like it uh sketchy information three mana draw a death rattle card that costs four or less trigger a death rattle trigger its death rattle that is so uh maybe this is where you play the lone shark right in your sketchy information deck Three mana, draw a card, add two coins to your hand. That actually does get to skip the battle cry portion of giving your opponent a coin too. So that that actually is quite strong. Maybe I underestimated that initially. Uh, what other death rattles can Rogue play? They've got Ticketmaster. They've got Infiltrator Lillian. So this is three mana, draw Lillian, and summon a 4-2 that attacks a random enemy. That's potentially quite strong. Uh, this also does trigger a death rattle, so you can use your weapon. A weapon is something that I initially didn't like too much, but this does make it look better. Um, you can AoE with this card with Explosive Sheep. Make a 4-4 four four with the Ruby and Egg. You can just draw an extra card with Loot Hoarder, so you can just play Arcane Intellect and Rogue. Heal a little bit with Death's Head Cultist. This is what costs four or less. So yeah, I mean, there's like a pretty wide variety of things you can do with this card. But I don't know. You do have to have like a certain amount of support for it. I think when you play this, you'd like to know if you're going to be AoEing or drawing more cards or adding coins. But it is potentially quite powerful. I don't know what deck you play this in necessarily. Like, uh, does Efficient Octobot... Garot Murder Rogue play this. I don't know about that. I don't know. I think this is definitely powerful enough to see play. It's just a matter of where. Uh, Counterfeit Blade. We have seen this one, but uh, it looks a little bit better now with the previous card. So, 4 mana 4 2 Battle Cry. Gain a random friendly death rattle that triggered this game. This is a weapon, obviously. So, part of my issue with this card initially is you do need to have had a death rattle minion that you played and it died already 
but with the uh with the sketchy information you don't actually have to do that you can just trigger a death rattle from your deck on turn three and then your counterfeit blade is active on turn four uh, you, this is still slow because you have to like play this and then you don't get the death rattle until the following turn but that is nice you can potentially give yourself uh what four coins if you hit lone shark that's a lot of mana can double up on your board clears with explosive sheep or this is a nice heal package with death's head cultist but i'm still not really seeing a death rattle package that i'm crazy about um you can also play this in the late game but we didn't really get any big impressive death rattle minions that i want to play with this i don't know i just don't really see the archetype coming together honestly but there is like a solid package here that could be good Next up we have SI7 Informant, 4 mana 3-3 three, three with Battle Cry, gain plus 1 plus 1 for each SI7 card you've played this game. So we've seen the Operative, which uh, sucks. We saw the Extortion, which is pretty good, but you might be trading it. I'm pretty sure this won't count if you trade it. And then there's like SI7 Agent and some neutral card you're never going to play. Uh, for this card to be good, you need to have played at least two, probably three SI7 cards. Seems kind of hard to do that on curve for this. I mean, maybe you're going like extortion on one, SI7 agent coined out on two, operative on three, and then bam, four mana, six, six. But it's just such a bad card on its own. It's going to be so bad most games or a lot of games, at least in the, at least on curve. You have to play some sketchy stuff to support it. I just don't love this card. Kind of seems like garbage. And then finally, SI7 Assassin. 7 mana 4-4 four, four costs 1 less for each SI7 card you've played this game. Combo, destroy an enemy minion. So this card is insane. Like, this is a better SI7 payoff than the quest line, in my opinion. Well, maybe not better, but it's a really strong SI7 payoff card alongside the quest line. But, like, the oper uh, what is it? The operative and the informant are both just so garbage. I'm pretty happy playing SI7 Extortion, SI7 Agent. But other than that, like, man, I think there's just not enough playable SI7 cards for me to want to play this. And, uh, like, the side quest, you need to play six SI7 cards to finish that. So you play, like, two of these, two SI7 Agents, two Extortion. There's six, but you have to draw, like, all six of those. That's not really good enough, so you have to play Operative. And even with eight... And you like kind of have to play informant too i think there's just not enough support for this card but like if if in the next expansion they print like another like one or two more si7 cards that are actually good then suddenly this card is insane even with only two discounts it's just better than vile spine slayer right and any cheaper than that then it just keeps getting more and more insane but yeah, I currently just don't think the card pool is there for this card, even though in theory it's really good. Same with the quest line. Alright, Shaman, starting with their quest line, which we have seen before. But uh, you want to play three overload cards. The reward is unlocking your overloaded mana crystals. And then you want to play three more overload cards. You get a 3-3 three, three with Taunt. Like two more overload cards, you get Stormcaller Brucon, and Stormcaller Brucon says for the rest of the game, your spells cast twice. Uh, we actually didn't get... Okay, we got one overload card that we're going to see. But we also got Overdraft, the big overload payoff card. Um, I did say before, I'm not sure... Like, a lot of the overload cards are your burn spells... Or just, like, things that you'd want to be using with Brucon. You have to play eight of them to get to Brucon, which is kind of sketchy. But, like, maybe this card is good enough just because, like, the early rewards are both pretty solid if you hit them in the right spot. I don't know. I still don't really love Stormcaller Brucon as a win condition. I think Shaman, surprisingly, has, uh, has a better, like, late-game win condition. And if you want to just do Doomhammer stuff, then you can just do that without Brucon. But the quest is fine. I think it might be carried by the early levels, but it also might be unplayable. Um, investment opportunity. One mana draw an overload card. A very solid card. One mana draw a card is quite good. This draws overload cards that you care about for your side quest and for your overdraft. There's also just like some pretty insane overload cards that are nice to have at the right time. 
uh, drawing into like a Serpent Shrine portal consistently on turn three is quite good. Or you can even use this to draw into Lightning Bloom, which can maybe like play this on turn one. You always have Lightning Bloom on two, and then you can play like a four drop on turn two. That's potentially really insane. Uh, it's just card draw. Yeah, good card. There are enough playable overload cards that this has to see play. It's not um, a nature spell though, actually. So not being a nature spell might mean that uh, you'd rather just play Primordial Dungeoneer. So I guess it's an either or between this or Dungeoneer, but it's like two separate draw engines. Nice that you have the choice. Uh, Overdraft, really good card. We didn't really get that much overload support, but we did get the investment opportunity. Uh, just a good card. One mana, tradable, unlock your overloaded mana crystals to deal that much damage. It's pretty easy to deal a lot of damage with this card. If you don't have overload, you just trade it away. Uh, just a good card. Pretty big incentive to play something like the quest line or just overload shaman in general. But uh, it remains to be seen if it's better than Ellie shaman. Auction house gavel. This is a weapon for shaman. Two mana, two, two. After your hero attacks, reduce the cost of a battle cry minion in your hand by one. Um, I mean, in theory, two mana, two, two weapon gives you two mana, could be good. But I feel like this just competes so directly with Whack and Old Hammer. And Whack and Old Hammer is tempo, and tempo is good. This is kind of tempo, but it's like delayed tempo, which is kind of sketchy. And it only reduces the cost of a battle cry minion. I guess that means it's like targeted, but uh, that also means that sometimes you're just not going to get anything off this. It doesn't really curve that well with the cage match custodian. Um, I think I'd rather just play one of Shaman's other weapons. I really don't love this card, to be honest. Uh, Bolner Hammerbeak, 2 mana 1 4. After you play a battle cry minion, repeat the first battle cry played this turn. I talked about this card pretty extensively. I don't think anything has really changed with this card. Although I guess maybe the weapon we just saw that discounts Battlecry minions opens up some more combos, but we already had Lightning Bloom to do that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. But uh, yeah, just seems like a pretty solid card. Could go in a lot of Shaman decks, could be the star of the uh, Yasharaj OTK thing with uh, Lightning Bloom Circus Medic Dunk Tank. Yeah, good card. Uh, charge Call, 3 mana nature spell for Shaman. Discover a 1 cost minion and summon it. Upgraded for each overload card you've played this game. So yeah, obviously if this isn't upgraded, it's trash. Um, discover a 1 cost minion and summon it. When does this actually start getting good? Around like 5 maybe? So you need to have played 4 overload spells. And then uh, it just keeps scaling from there. I think it's pretty easy to play a bunch of overload spells. We have, uh, we've got Lightning Bloom, we've got Guidance, Investment Opportunity helps find stuff, Lightning Bolt, Novice Zapper, Perpetual Flame, maybe Feral Spirit, maybe Lightning Storm, Serpent Shrine Portal, and there's a new 4-drop that's insane. Uh, I don't know, Earth Elemental, Doom Hammer. I think it's pretty easy to play, like, 4 overload cards and then this starts to look pretty good. Um, I do think the overload deck is probably going to be, like, pretty focused on just killing the opponent, probably with Doomhammer. And in that deck, I don't know that you really care to have this effect. But if you can consistently level it up to, like, I don't know, 7, where it's a really insane card, then it could potentially be quite good. But I don't know if this is necessarily the effect an overload shaman is looking for. But it is a nature spell, so, uh... Fine with the Dungeoneer, if uh, you're concerned about that. I don't know. I don't think I love the card, to be honest, but maybe it just gets upgraded so consistently. What could you do on turn one with this card? Bloom, Bloom, Bolt, Bolt, 6 drop? No, 5 drop? Could be pretty insane on turn one, but the Bolts kind of suck. I guess you'd rather go like Bloom, Bloom... And then double novice zapper plus this, but yeah, that's a bit of a dream. Awkward card. Potentially powerful, though. Alright, next up we have the Canal Slogger. 4 mana 6, 4 elemental with rush, lifesteal, and overload 1. Uh, this card's just really good, right? 4 mana 6, 4. 
It's uh, got rush, so it kills something. It's got life seal, so it makes sure you don't die. It does have overload one, but that's not necessarily even a bad thing. It's good with the quest line. You can draw it with investment opportunity. Um, it's got elemental synergy, so it curves into... Well, I guess it doesn't necessarily curve into a uh, lily pad lurker, but it can enable the lily pad lurker or uh, arid stormer. I mean, this card just... It does so much. It does have, like, kind of a small amount of health, but that's really only relative to its attack power. It's still a 4-drop with 4 health. That's not that low. Um, I think this card is just really good. This might be the card that, like, allows you to play a more late-game quest line deck because you can. it's so easy to stay alive when you're playing this card. Like, you immediately get 6 healing. You can probably trade in such a way where this doesn't even die. So you might get, like, 12 healing out of it. So, like, this is the card that can make uh, Stormcaller Brucon, like, actually a relevant threat. This card is just really good, though. You play it in, like, every deck. With some of these other cards, I'm like, well, I don't know if Elemental Shaman's gonna be better or Overload Shaman. This one doesn't care. It goes in both of those decks, and it goes in a lot of Shaman decks, because it's just a really good card. Granite Forgeborn. 4 mana, 4, 5 Elemental. Battle cry, reduce the cost of elementals in your hand and deck by one. Wow. Uh, this is like a really insane effect. Four mana, four five is like already where you want it to be. It's an elemental, so it activates, you know, lily pad lurker or whatever. And uh, yeah, discounts your hand and deck by one. Current elemental shaman does play a lot of elementals. So you're pretty likely to be hitting relevant discounts off this. Um, it also just curves like straight into fire elemental. But like maybe it's a bit slow. Maybe by this point in the game, elemental shaman is more concerned about having cards than having mana. And at that point you might have some wasted discounts. But man, it's hard to imagine something that discounts, I don't know, like 12, 14 cards in your deck not being worth it. This card seems real nice. You're definitely trying it out in Elemental Shaman. Uh, you can maybe even, like, Elemental Shaman doesn't even necessarily play Alakir at the moment, although it looks like most of them do, but this is, like, pretty good incentive to play Alakir. I wonder if you can do anything silly with Shaman with this, like, discounting Primordial Protector or something. Shaman probably doesn't have a big spell that's, like, good with this. But yeah, I mean, that, this is a really dangerous card. This many discounts, it seems to go in a deck that already exists and is good. Scary card. Uh, Spirit Alpha, 4 mana 2-5. After you play a card with Overload, summon a 2-3 Spirit Wolf with Taunt. So uh, this is a really powerful Violet Teacher. Similar stat line, minus 1 attack. But man, 2-3s with Taunt are a lot better than 1-1s. One um, you can use Lightning Bloom with this. Uh, it's just card with overload, not spell necessarily. So maybe you coin this out and then play the uh, the big slogger, canal slogger to follow it up. 2-5 is a pretty solid stat line. It's not that easy to deal with. But uh, on its own, this is a 2-5, a 4-mana 2-5, which is not great. Um, I think the overload shaman deck might be a lot more concerned about just murdering the opponent than making board presence. But maybe in the quest line deck that's more late game focused, cares about Brucon, maybe that deck is more interested in this. But like even then, I don't know, I guess you play this on turn five with Perpetual Flame. That still only makes one, two, three though, I'm pretty sure. But hey, clear your aggro hunter opponent's board and make a two, three taunt is like pretty good. Other than that, you're playing like Lightning Bolt or Novice Sapper, not necessarily cards that you really want to be, uh, just like throwing out just to activate this card necessarily. But Lightning Bloom certainly helps as it does with all these other overload synergies. Could be good, but I think it maybe doesn't fit the deck. Uh, Tiny Toys, we have seen this one, but six mana summon four random five cost minions, make them two two. So uh, you, it can just be pretty good on its own, but the place it really shines is in Evolve Shaman with Bog Spine Knuckles, or maybe even uh, Revolve. Uh, my biggest issue with this card is that Shaman got some pretty good stuff in this set. 
some pretty good like overload synergies even a little bit of elemental synergy and those decks are already better than evolve shaman so like does this make evolve shaman the shaman deck i'm skeptical that it does but uh the combo with this and bogs by knuckles is really insane so that might just be good enough to carry the deck I don't think there's too much to say about this. It goes and Evolve Shaman with Bogs by Knuckles. Probably doesn't really see play anywhere else. And uh, my current my current guess is that it probably won't be the best Shaman deck. Uh, Warlock, the Demon Seed. This is the quest line that we saw very early on. But uh, it wants you to take 6 damage on your turns. And then it gives you lifesteal, deal 3 damage to the enemy hero. Then you want to take 7 damage on your turns, life steal, deal 3 damage to the enemy hero. And then you want to take 8 damage on your turns to get Tamsin, who says for the rest of the game, damage you take on your turn damages your opponent instead. So the big payoff with this is Fatigue. You get into Fatigue and it starts dealing damage to your opponent instead. Fatigue damage adds up really fast and uh, this can just kill the opponent. Um, I did like this a lot as a win condition initially when I saw it. But a lot of these quest lines give people win conditions. And I think this might end up just being, like, too slow. Like, this loses to the priest side que or, uh, quest line, rather, right? And, like, even once you get to fatigue, it does still take some time for this to start actually killing the opponent. Um, I mean, we did get, like, we do have good activators for it, potentially. We got uh, a new imp that does damage when you attack with it. I guess this actually didn't get that much direct synergy in the set, but there's plenty of stuff that exists already that helps you take damage on your turns and you can always life tap. So, I mean, I don't think it's that hard to finish this quest line. I think Warlock has enough healing that they can afford to finish it. But I just, I don't know. I'm skeptical that it's like the best win condition in the format. And when there's something like the Priest quest line or like a uh, Shaman's got several potential ways to finish games when there's a lot of stuff like that around it's kind of unusual for all of it to be playable there tends to be like one best late game like combo otk thing that just kind of shuts out the rest of them because the better one wins in the head-to-head -head. and uh i don't know i'm skeptical that this is going to be good enough i think you might be better off in warlock just milling your opponent's deck but uh Maybe the Warlock that mills its own deck is just really insane with this card. I don't know. Could be insane, could be not playable. I'm leaning toward the weaker end. Uh, Touch of the Nathrazim, one mana shadow spell, deal two damage to a minion. If it dies, restore four health to your hero. Control Warlock, sure does love heals. The quest line deck also loves heals. 2 damage killing a minion seems pretty realistic, just seems like a good card in a control warlock. Uh, Bloodbound Imp, 2 mana 2-5 two demon, whenever this attacks deal 2 damage to your hero. A really powerful stat line for a 2 drop. Um, if you're just playing this in zoo, you are going to be taking a lot of damage playing this. But it's a sticky minion, it curves really nice into Cabal Outfitter. And you have a 3-6, uh, that's really really insane. Um, there's a, there's the shady bartender that likes buffing your demons. There are a lot of places this could see play in the quest, in the uh, quest line deck or in zoo. But for as much damage as it does to your hero, like it's still, it does two damage to both players. So it's really just speeding up the game. It's not really giving you much of an advantage in that regard. And uh, it's like... If you play this against like a hunter, they're just going to ignore it while you kill yourself by killing their minions. So it's a little bit of a sketchy card, but it has a lot of appropriate synergies. I think it's probably not going to be good enough for the quest line deck. I think they just have better ways to activate their quest. And I don't have that much faith in Zoo to be honest, so wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't see much play, but it could be good. A dreaded mount, three mana. Give a minion plus one plus one. When it dies, summon an endless dreadsteed. So uh yeah. Tamson's dreadsteed, four mana one one demon. Death rattle at the end of the turn, summon Tamson's dreadsteed. So this is the dreadsteed we know and love from what set was that in? Frozen Throne, maybe? Whispers of the Old Gods? I don't know. 
Um, this is a really, really slow card. Three mana to give a minion plus one plus one. I think that's the worst mount, just like straight up as a buff card. And then your payoff is a one one. And like it's it's nice to have a dread steed. It has good synergy with um that warlock AoE where you have to sacrifice a minion to deal two damage to the opposing minions. It's nice to have for that. It's potentially good with Ritual of Doom. Um, it is also a demon for the shady bartender, so that's like pretty good as well. But at the end of the day, Dreadsteed was like always pretty slow. This card is also pretty slow. It's like marginally faster than Dreadsteed. Although, depending on the situation, you can't even play this because you do have to buff a minion with it to uh, actually get the Dreadsteed. So, I don't know. I can't really see myself playing this in Zoo, and it seems low impact for any other, uh, any other Warlock. But I really like the effect on this card. I just don't think it's that good. Uh, Ruined Mithril Rod, the Warlock Weapon, 3 mana 0 2. After you draw 4 cards, reduce the cost of cards in your hand by 1, lose 1 durability. Uh, yeah, I actually forgot about this card. This card's really good though, right? Like, it's just super easy to draw 4 cards in Warlock because of Life Tap and you naturally draw a card every turn. This is going to give you, as a Warlock, probably like... 17 mana or something. This card's just really good. I think you put this in all your slow Warlock decks. Uh, Dark Alley Pact. We've seen this one before. Four mana, summon a fiend with stats equal to your hand size. It's just Mountain Giant. Mountain Giant was good in Warlock. Uh, Demonic Assault. Four mana, deal three damage, summon two, one, three Void Walkers with Taunt. So you compare it to Flanking Strike. Two Void Walkers are better than a three, three. This can go face. Seems good in Zoo, seems good as a control card. Just seems really solid all around for Warlock decks. Uh, Shady Bartender, 5 mana 4-4 four, four with Tradable and Battlecry. Give your demons plus 2 plus 2. So this card is really only playable in Zoo. That's the only, uh, only deck where you'd want to buff stuff. We did get a couple new demons to support it. Uh, we have the Demonic Assault, which is a good lead into this. And then we got the Bloodbound Imp and the Dreaded Mount. But I don't really love either of those cards. So, uh, yeah, the synergy with this card doesn't make them seem that much better. But this is a good card on its own. Like, if Zoo is good, this is probably, like, one of the best cards in the deck. I'm just so skeptical that Zoo is going to be playable with the current card pool. Uh, Anetheron, Warlock Legendary, 6 mana, 8, 6 demon. Costs 1 if your hand is full. I think it's pretty easy to make your hand full. Mountain Giant's a good card in Warlock. Let's move on. And finally, we have Entitled Customer. Six mana, three, two, battle cry, deal damage equal to your hand size to all other minions. Uh, so this card's just insane, right? This card is very often six mana for like seven or eight AoE and you make a three, two. It's just an insane card. Um, I don't know why Warlock needed more removal on top of Twisting Nether and Soul Rend and uh, whatever the corrupt thing is that kills three minions and their smaller board clears. I don't know why Warlock needed this, but they're sure going to play it. All right, moving on to Warrior, we have Provoke. Uh, zero mana with Tradable. Choose a friendly minion, enemy minions, attack it. Yeah, we've seen this card. It's really good. Uh, you can make your whole board attack into your crush, and that just wins the game against aggro. Uh, it's a pretty good board clear with, like, Rattle Gore. If you don't have the big minion to support it, you just trade it away. Very solid card. Uh, Raid the Docks, the warrior quest line. So, quest line, you want to play three pirates, and then your reward is draw a weapon. For some reason, the official Hearthstone website doesn't have all the quest lines. Alright, this kind of looks terrible, but it gets the point across. Alright, so the first phase is play three pirates, draw a weapon, and then you want to play two pirates. You deal two damage to a random enemy twice, then you play two more pirates, you get Captain Rakara. She is a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven with battle cry, summon the Juggernaut. And the Juggernaut says, at the start of your turn, summon a pirate, equip a warrior weapon, and fire two cannons that deal two damage. So this is potentially a really strong, like, finisher card, the Juggernaut, that is. 
uh, you get something on board every turn. But the more important part is you get the weapon and you fire two damage randomly. So that two damage can hit minions or can go face. And your weapon can also go face. So you potentially, I don't know what the average warrior weapon is, but you can get like Gore Howl. So this probably does an average of like seven damage per turn. Some of it goes to minions, but then your weapon does like three on average, I'm saying. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of damage. You need to play seven pirates to finish this, but we got some pretty good pirates in this set. And of course, there's always Sword Eater, there's Stone Maul Anchorman. Uh, it seems like this could be pretty solid. Uh, the pirates are being pushed more in like a mid-rangey direction. This is a very solid mid-range finisher. The 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven is a relevant threat with this type of end game. Seems like it could just be pretty good. I'm interested to see how uh, how Questline Pirate Warrior pans out. I definitely think it's going to be slower than Pirate Warriors we've seen in the past. Alright, so Shiver Their Timbers, 1 mana, deal 2 damage to a minion. If you control a pirate, deal 5 instead. So we saw this card before, but it makes a lot more sense now, seeing that pirates are being pushed pretty hard in Warrior. And they're even being pushed in more of a mid-range direction, which makes a lot more sense with this type of effect. Uh, I still don't know that I love this, though, because it does seem like your end game with pirates is still, like, going face with weapons and cannon damage. Uh, one mana that can only deal damage to a minion is kind of sketchy. If it's only the two, then it's, like, pretty bad, but even if you have a pirate, dealing five damage is often going to be overkill. And you have a lot of weapons that can help you deal with minions anyway. I don't love this card, but I mean, you definitely do just consider playing this if you have a bunch of pirates in your deck. And it's possible that every warrior deck has a bunch of pirates because of Harbor Scamp. 2 mana 2-2 two, two pirate with battle cry, draw a pirate. Uh, this card, it's obviously really good with the quest line, right? Because it's two pirates in one, and you only need seven for the quest line. And just 2 mana 2-2 two, two draw card is really solid. Uh, this card actually reminds me a lot of Town Crier. When Town Crier was in Standard and you decided you wanted to play a Warrior deck, you started by putting in two copies of Town Crier and like three Rush minions. And then you built the deck around that. Or you built the other 25 cards after that. I think Harbor Scamp might be similar. From now on, Warrior decks might just be two Harbor Scamps and then like two or three other pirates. And then you figure out your other 25 cards. Um, even if you're not a dedicated pirate deck, you're already pretty happy playing Sword Eater. Stone Maul Anchorman is a fine card. Yeah, I think this card is just really good, and it's gonna be, it's definitely good in the questline deck. Probably goes in every warrior deck. Cargo Guard. 3 mana 2 4 pirate. At the end of your turn, gain 3 armor. So this is definitely the strangest pirate that's ever been printed. Pirates tend to be pretty aggressive, and this is definitely a defensive card. But I think it might be good. Uh, we did see Evil Quartermaster, I think was what that warrior minion was called. It was a 3 mana 2-3. Two, and uh, it drew a weapon, or drew a, a, a lackey rather, and gave you some armor. And like, that card is pretty good. This is similar. It's got a slightly better stat line and gives you some armor. Obviously it doesn't draw the lackey, which was kind of a big deal. But it can potentially give you more armor every turn. It's a maybe like a third pirate to draw with a Harbor Scamp if you just want to play two copies of Sword Eater. Seems kind of fine. I actually don't really know if this goes in the quest line deck because I don't know if this has good enough stats to be played in something that seems pretty mid-range. But I think it's an okay card. I don't love it, but uh, it does say pirate on it, so it might be playable. Uh, heavy Plate, one of the first cards we saw. But this is 3 mana with tradable, gain 8 armor. Uh, yeah, I think this is maybe the worst tradable card. But I have a very high opinion of tradable, so this might still be playable. I think it probably won't be, though. Because a card that just gains armor, even if you can trade it sometimes, is uh, not that exciting. I don't think we got any like armor synergies. And I don't think, just in general, I don't think anything in Standard really cares about armor, does it? 
I guess Shield Slam. But other than Shield Slam, it doesn't really seem like it. Well, I guess there is like the weapon that cares about having armor. There's Ironclad. That all seems kind of garbage. I don't really see much of a home for this card. I think if you want to be gaining armor, you'd rather just play like Shield Maiden or Scrap Golem or maybe even the Cargo Guard we just saw. But I don't know. Maybe I'm underestimating tradable. It's a really insane keyword. But even with my already high opinion of it, I don't know if this has much of a home. But, you know, depending on the meta, Control Warrior is always potentially in the market for some more survivability. Stormwind Freebooter. 3 mana 3 3 pirate with battle cry. Give your hero plus 2 attack this turn. Uh, seems pretty solid uh, compared to like SI7 agent, right? 3 mana 3 3 deal 2 to a minion or 2 to face if you really want that. SI7 agent's not that good at the moment, but this doesn't have to be comboed and it's a pirate. So good at the quest line, good with Harbor Scamp. This does seem to fit the play style of the quest line as well. Just more of a mid rangey maybe even slightly aggro kind of card. Seems good in the quest line deck. I think we have better options even for pirates outside of quest line, but the quest line seems playable, so maybe this is playable. A remote controlled golem. We did see this card already, but 4 mana 3 6 mech. After this takes damage, shuffle two golem parts into your deck when drawing summon a 2 1 mech. Yeah, my opinion on this hasn't really changed. None of the new stuff has made this seem better. It's just an awkward card. Two ones past this point in the game are just not going to be very relevant. I just think you can be doing better things on four mana in really any warrior deck. A uh, Cowardly Grunt. Six mana, six two with death rattle. Summon a minion from your deck. So this is uh, more support for like commencement, right? You want to be able to uh, play a deck full of big things and cheat them out. Use this to cheat out Rattlegore and uh, Troublemaker and things like that. Uh, I think this card is pretty solid, right? I mean, assuming you build around it, it's 6 mana 6 two. That's a threatening minion that does have to be dealt with. And then when they deal with it, then you get, you know, some big ridiculous card that your deck is built around. Even if you're just hitting Crash, which is another 6 drop, that's like pretty good. And I think that deck has enough... Uh, has enough threats that you can probably play like a commencement style deck. You've got Rattlegore, Troublemaker, maybe Lothar, Crash. Uh, there's like the new Demon that's a taunt that gives a bunch of armor. I think this card's pretty good. I don't know if it'll be enough to revive Commencement Warrior, but it's a very strong card in that deck. Like even if you hit this off Commencement, it's not going to be your highest roll, but it's still, even though this is just a 6-2 Divine Shield with Taunt. It still has its Death Rattle, right? So you pull something else out of the deck as well. I think it's a good card. And then finally we saw Lothar earlier. 7-7-7. Seven seven, seven. At the end of your turn, attack a random enemy minion. If it dies, gain plus 3 plus 3. I think it's pretty solid. Warrior is uh, in the market for a 7-drop, I would say. And uh, this is a pretty solid 7-drop. Seems like you can play it in Control. You can play it in... Uh, like Rush Warrior, that's curving up to Troublemaker and Alexstrasza. Seems like it curves nicely into those. And uh, maybe you play it with uh, the Cowardly Grunt. Seems like a solid card. 